and welcome to the Matt and Kendall Hagee podcast. I am personally so excited about this week in our lives because this is Thanksgiving week. Oh, stretchy pants and food. This is the meal that I have been preparing all year to receive. This yes. is why I get up this and go to the gym. Out. This is why I do push-ups and sit-ups. This is why the gym sit-ups. is jam-packed for two weeks before Thanksgiving. Hey, this is why I eat protein bars <laughs> May through September just oh, so just I can... To- Eat deep fried turkey and 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 he all. said deep fried because that is exactly what if you he have does. ever deep he fried a turkey deep fries a turkey you're gonna have to watch yeah. us on our social media this week because Matthew Hagee will be deep frying not only one but possibly two deep fried turkeys. you know by popular demand I could deep fry more than two <laughs> and ship they it. are the best it is yeah, so ship much it to a better. lucky listener and it's easier don't you I mean well it's easier on me in the kitchen. Yeah. But it's easier, I think, to deep fry your chicken. Here's what the I turkey. know. Turkey. Sorry, yeah. chicken turkey. It's a bigger yeah, it's sorry. bigger bird than a chicken, babe. <laughs> but, you know, here's what I know. Whenever you don't deep fry the turkey, there's plenty of it left over. When you deep fry the turkey, you can't find any of it at the end of the day. So, That's you right. know, this is not only a great time with family and food and, and opportunities to just get together and enjoy each other's company, but we recently had a conversation with a person uh, that you know many of you may know as a celebrity chef, a television host, an author, a speaker, a writer. Uh, you know, I didn't know this, but she's been obviously uh, on the Food Network yes. for quite a while. She was a judge too, I think, on there. Yeah, she she was a judge on one of the reality shows that they had, where they tell people who think they can cook that they can't. But anyway. Oh. Uh, you know, what what she was here for the difference was to help us understand more about how food is something that we should celebrate and not really, you know, what it has become is something that people really stress about, that they, they're worried about, you know, what you eat, and what you don't eat and how you eat. And certainly food needs to be managed and, and balanced and you need to use it in an appropriate way. Uh, but, you know, there are times whenever you just need to take a moment and be thankful. And that's what we were discussing recently with Melissa D. Arabian. And uh, for those of you who are familiar with her, you're going to know immediately who we're talking about. For those of you who don't, we encourage you to find out more about her latest book, Tasting, Tasting Great. Grace. And uh, Tasting Did you say great? Tasting Grace. Grace. Is it, it was Grace, wasn't grace, it? Grace, babe. Yes. Tasting Grace. Well, I, I'm thankful but for you're Grace. You're thinking of Tasting and Great because your deep fried turkey is exactly. going to be great. I, you know, got all these other thoughts about you know sweet potato casserole and mashed potatoes and you know. So follow him on his social media. Yes, and get all the recipes. And with great grace, it'll all taste great. So please allow this conversation to be a blessing and make a difference in your everyday life. As we were talking about Thanksgiving and the things that we're thankful for with Melissa D. Arabian. And our guest today is somebody who has found a way not only to connect gratitude with everyday living, but gratitude with everyday eating. Melissa D. Arabian is the author of several cookbooks, and and she's recently written a book called Tasting Grace. And and that book kind of connects some ideas about the natural food cycle and the supernatural God who created it. Melissa, what is it about this time of year that you really enjoy? Well, Thanksgiving is probably the holiday that we all think about is being centered around food. It's where we wear our stretchy pants. Right? <laughs> yes. you know, I mean, you don't wear your it tight is. fitting clothes to that table. <laughs> no, no, yeah. that's that's why yoga pants were invented. Yes, that's was right. For, was I don't for have Thanksgiving. Those. <laughs> and when thank God, yeah, when right. we have a a shared experience, um, at least in the United States, we have you know, a lot of other people are sitting around the table at the same time um, on on that Thursday. And that's what food is, right? It food is. is a gift from God to be to be cherished and loved and leaned into and shared. Food is meant to bring us together. So my favorite part about Thanksgiving is of the many levels in which we are really a community and we're brought together around the table. And that's 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 a big part of food. Absolutely. Yes. You know, it's it's a way not only to celebrate, but it's a way to share. One of the things that we do as a church every Thanksgiving is we have an opportunity for people to, uh, what we operationally do is we go out and we buy a truckload of turkeys. And, and you know, one of the things about turkeys is, is I've noticed in one of your cookbooks, you're talking about budgets and, and meals and things like that. Turkey is cheap meat. And, and, and one thing that I don't think people realize is it's on sale all year long. 
you know, and so we will go, we will purchase a truckload of turkeys and we give our church members an opportunity to buy their turkeys from the church. There's no profit in it for us, but what we do with the money is we turn around, we buy more turkeys and give them out to people who don't have Thanksgiving and they don't have the money for it. And, and so in doing that, we've been able to go into communities in San Antonio and you just knock on a door and you have a sack of potatoes, you got a turkey, you got a box of stuffing and some rolls and you say, we just want to bless you, have a happy Thanksgiving. And we don't know who they are. They don't know who we are. They don't have any obligation to come back to the church. All they're getting in that moment is just a little bit of the love of Jesus dropped off in their hands and you would be astounded and maybe you wouldn't, but it's just amazing how many wonderful testimonies come out of that one interaction centered around that one act of giving somebody some food. That's right. And, and you mentioned in your book, Tasting Grace, about how you gave us some action points at each chapter, which everybody needs to get that book. It's more of a devotion, which is awesome. But you said, take action and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, and we are called to be the hands and yeah. feet of Jesus. I was, I was raised on a school lunch program as somebody who was the grateful recipient of a program that allowed me to have my school lunch for free. It was in the school cafeteria where I even discovered that I was poor. I had no idea that I was poor. That just was, you know, when, when you're a child, sort of whatever you're living in is what yeah, you think is, is normal. the normal. And when I look back at the people who were have the hands and feet of Jesus, I think, oh, what, what, what a gift. They had no idea that they were sharing the gospel with me, even though they never once mentioned well, Jesus. Well, here in the ministry, we call them difference makers. And, and we tell people that the difference you make may not seem significant to you, but you have no idea the difference it's going to make in the life of somebody else. And what you're describing there is the difference makers in your life who in very real and tangible ways did things that not only blessed you, but created in you blessings that were turned around and given to other people. You know, your cookbooks are blessings that are given to other people. They bring other people together. The book that you've just authored, Tasting Grace, you know, I was kind of mistaken about that book because when Kendall had it in her hands, I was being blessed. I was like, my wife is reading a cookbook. <laughs> yes. Jesus, you're moving in our midst. She Aww. is going to try a new recipe. And then she said, this is a devotional book written by a lady who's on the Food it's Network. Story, and I was like, her no. Testimony. Yes. But, no, you know, it, was, you know, it was very it, moving. It, it's, it's really been a blessing because it does very well connect food can be and should be ministry. It, yeah. Food is ministry. Well, and let's just take a, let's take a step back. How does God use food in the Bible in so many different ways? I mean, even from the very beginning, with the food system He created and putting Ad, you know putting Adam to work in the garden, He, was showing, he it, was showing us His genius. He was giving us not only His genius but His best, yeah. right? That's so right. we can lean into into that joy when when the Israelites had left Egypt and they're grumbling, oh, we should have stayed in Egypt. At least we would be you know eating roast right now. Yeah. You know what does God do? Man. He, yes, yeah. he doesn't even yell at them. They're not even grateful. Well, like you, God, you, God gives you, you them free Psalms, food. You, you read Psalm seventy-eight, and it says that men ate angels' food. Yes. Which you know that's not poetry. That's if you understand the Bible as a literal text. Basically, what it means is that God went to the tables in heaven, which one tells us that angels eat. Which means when we get to Hallelujah. heaven, we get to eat too. Well, and so, we're promised that. Yeah, right? exactly. Right? No, we're I mean, promised that. That's, that's, <laughs> As, as a Christian kid growing up, I was always like, Lord, what are we going to eat when we get to heaven? You know, and so when I read that, that angels eat, I was like, oh, praise God. Uh, but, you know, literally what it's describing is, you know, it's like God went over to one of the angels and said, excuse me, I need that bowl. And he took it and he poured it out on mankind. And unfortunately, men didn't appreciate it. And, and as old as that story is, it's current because there are going to be a lot of people this time of year. They're going to sit down and they're going to go through their traditions and, and thank God for them. Yeah. But they're not going to take a moment and give gratitude to the God who made all of it possible. And it's not just the meal. I mean, th this is something that I think about all the time. Every time you get Thanksgiving with the same people, that's a blessing. Yeah. Because there are going to be people missing at certain tables. There's going to be, there will be. there's going to be an empty chair. There's going to be a grandparent that's gone. There's going to be a parent that's not there. And you have to stop and say, thank you, God, that I get to do this one more time. Even if that's it, that's something that's effective. 
And, and keeping that gratitude going in the cultural space, which is going to tell you, okay, now get into the gym on Friday to work off those calories. Yes. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. I'm at least staying out of the gym till Monday. Right. right. <laughs> Well, I'm going to do grace, leftovers Friday, grace, Saturday. If, if we can, I may yes, fast on Sunday. I don't know. Well, and the, hey, listen, there's a time and a season there's and a there's a balance for everything. So yeah. uh, so our, us being grateful for food is not licensed to into, into gluttony for sure. But when we start creating this dynamic of... You know, Thanksgiving is the day that we are, quote unquote, bad on our diets. And then the next day we go in to be good and, you know, sweat on the treadmill to work that off. We're setting up a dynamic where we're ruining both food and exercise and both of which can yeah. be used to glorify God. That's right. So that, that's, that's, that's the tricky part, I think, of, of Thanksgiving right now is that we, can, we get so sidetracked into this half lie and half truth space that that frankly satan is thrilled that we are lured into and we we need to be careful about that half truth and half lie space well, that satan and, loves and yeah. you're describing balance you know and what i know in my own life uh and and people who have followed my family and, and my family history twice in my life i've lost over 100 pounds yeah. and in doing so the first time I went to extreme measures and, and, and I needed to because I was in an unhealthy place. But what I found out was as soon as I stopped doing the extreme things that I was doing and I tried to get back to a balanced life, I couldn't maintain my success. And so I gained the weight back. The second time I lost 100 pounds, I did it in a balanced way. And people would say, what'd you do? You got to tell me your secret. Yeah, what you, gotta, is, you know, yeah, what is the plan? you did something and I'd say, plan. I'm going to give it to you. I ate less and I sweat more. And they went, no, 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 no. Tell me again. You know, I mean, you know, and they wanted to know what powder I put in my coffee. And, you know, it was so funny because if I showed up to church drinking a particular like brand of water, they're like, it's, it's that water. It's, and I was like, I could have made so much money endorsing products <laughs> that had nothing to do with weight yeah, loss because yeah. people just assumed that was it. But literally I thought, okay, if I eat this many calories, I need to burn this many more so that my weight will do this. And over time, it worked. Yeah. Now the and benefit, choosing food wisely and, and, and thanking God for the food that he's given you and yes. eating his and, but, food, the and food the that he created. Yeah, right. The benefit of it is, one, I can maintain it. It's sustainable. But two, I can have Thanksgiving. You know, when I was in that extreme diet, I was the saddest Thanksgiving eater ever oh. because the plates went around the table and I went, no, I can't have that. And no, does that gravy have this? And does this have that? And I mean, I was scrutinizing every bite and enjoying none of it. And now I can go, you know what? Today is that day. Bring out the pie and the ice cream and all that stuff, and we'll make up for it some, some, somewhere down the road, but I'm not worried about it. And, and, you know, what you're talking about is something that Jesus really explained very clearly in Matthew chapter 6. Don't worry. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to wear. Look at the birds. Look at the flowers. If I take care of them right, like that, I'll take care yeah, of you. am I not going to take care of you? Absolutely. And, and, you know, when you take things out of balance... Worry walks in the door and says, "Hey, you better get back in balance, or else you're going to be in trouble." You know. And if and, and I love that you bring up this diet extra. Well, I think I brought it up. <laughs> I love that I brought it up. Yeah. What a genius move! Uh, but I love you it. Well, it is it is the <laughs> season. Everybody's talking yes. about it. We're getting prepared. Well, for when the holidays. gym memberships go through the roof. Oh, January. You know, yeah, yeah, January. January. Start start on January first. Yeah. 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 January. Everybody's signing up for the gym. Yeah. But I think that ultimately it comes down to us honoring the body that, that God gave us. And so if we really know in our hearts and our souls that we're eating food that honors God, um, and not just you know our bodies as temples, but also his system of food that he's created, um, and we know that we're honoring our bodies by exercising in a way that is health-giving, really what our weight ends up being um, with that choice of lifestyle is kind of God's business. Exactly. Right. Well, um, so but we're so good. focused on, yeah. you know, oh, but I want to go. Well, you know you, what? You have, Honor the body yeah. and then let him worry about let what that looks like. You have four daughters. Yeah, yes. We have two daughters. Two daughters. And, 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 and two sons. With, yeah. But in the culture that we live in, image is a huge factor. And, and our older two, our 12 and our 14 year old, some of that pressure is starting to show up. And, and one of the things that, you know, I'm consistently reminding them of is you are who God created you to be. For example... I have lost 100 pounds more than twice in my life. 
I don't know a whole lot of people that fit in that category, but if I step on a scale and took my weight to a doctor's office, the doctor would go, well, based on the chart, you're morbidly obese. And I'd be like, no, 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 I'll show you morbidly obese. I can get there, you know, and, and because of those image issues image. and because of what we've decided Labeling. as natural man, we should be, there are people that have to find a comfort in being who you are. That's right. You know, God right? created I, you to be. Who God created you to be. And I will. I, I didn't know you when you had the extra 100 pounds, but my guess is, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you were probably not eating and exercising and taking care of the body that God gave you in a way that, if you were honest, really was honoring God. And, and so well, food was for me, right? right. Yeah. Food was a comfort, you know, Hey, had a bad day at work. Let me go get that bag of chips. And hey, everybody you know, has their own yeah, comfort. Did, did uh, of like course this, they do. You know. Yes. And, and let's also, let's also step back for a quick second of all the vices and things that somebody can do, you know, Food is not the it's worst. It's the most of that, socially acceptable. Right? It's socially acceptable, yeah. true. It would also yeah. and also it's hard because you have to eat every single day. But I also just want to say, hey, listen, it's you know, there there could there could be a lot worse things, things. you can do than yeah. have a bag of chips because you've had a bad day. So let's also just step back and say that. But um, but my point is that if we are eating and we're eating in a way that honors God, and we are treating our bodies in a way that honors God. On a long-term, consistent basis, what our body looks like as a result of that is really God's business. Correct. And, and, and now on the flip side, when we find ourselves 100 pounds overweight, there, there has to be a part of us that sort of says, I, I don't know that this is the best for God. I mean, we really have to answer yeah. that in our souls and yeah. sort of say, well, I wonder if, I mean, God has created this system. Can I trust God's system for my palate to be satisfied by the food he has given me in the natural state of the world. So when we start freaking out and saying, oh my gosh, a tomato has too much sugar, but let me have well, you know Diet Coke with this artificial and, sugar. And, and, it, yeah. we, we, are, that, we are outside of that trust yeah. system, to, aren't we? To yes. that end, whenever I lost the weight the second time, I had some very simple rules. One, eat less, sweat more. The next rule was if God made it, eat it. Eat it. If man made it, don't. And And... Following that Amen. rule, mm -hmm. my, my balance of fruits, vegetables, proteins, and carbohydrates were fabulous. Mm -hmm. and, and it wasn't like I had to sit there and look at a scorecard and go, okay, now I got this many points here and I lost this many yes. points here. And oh goodness, I had a breath mint and a Tic Tac. I'm out of balance. <laughs> you know, right. and, 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 and that, I did that once before. It drove me nuts. Yes. You know, yeah, and this will. time I was like, no, God made that sweet potato. I can eat it. You know, mm -hmm. and, and God made hard boiled eggs. I can have those too. You know, and then somebody go, well, do you want pasta tonight? No, God didn't make pasta. Mm -hmm. We, we took that and kind of ground it up. Ground and, did, and I'm not saying pasta is bad, yeah. but right. in order to bring my life back into submission is really what I considered it. You know, in order to bring my life back into submission, I had to follow that rule. And I still follow that rule predominantly because that's how I maintain my health. Mm -hmm. And and you bring up there are some foods that are sort of a sometimes food. Yes. Yeah. So I think that the context for food is is um, changes um, sort of God's answer to the question: God, will this food be honoring you? So when my daughter Charlotte, who is a big baker, when she makes birthday cupcakes for everybody in the family. Um, when I have one of her birthday cupcakes, that's a very different experience from me sitting in front of, you know, the TV watching, uh, you know, TV well, and TV. eating a bunch of cake. I, like, I those are two different things. Yes. One, one, my favorite, my, my crippling desserts, I do not like chocolate. You know, I know I, I, that's I'm, mine. I'm, I'm, Mine's I'm, chocolate. Yeah, I mean, everybody goes, Wait, "Oh, so you, you must do love or chocolate. you don't?" I don't. don't. He does not I, like chocolate. And you don't like chocolate. I love chocolate. Okay. Yeah, chocolate. We're polar opposites. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Kill for chocolate. <laughs> well, you're right. He's wrong. And, and, yes. and, and, and her favorite chocolate. <laughs> that's opposite. Her favorite <laughs> chocolate is mint chocolate, which uh -huh. I think is disgusting. Oh, it's so but, good. It's so good. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, they just you know mint chocolate chip ice cream. They they crawl across glass for it. But my weakness is baked fruit. So like. Cobblers, pies, you know, these which I is mean, this perfect time of and, year. And cobblers and, you know, and but you pies. were talking about sometimes foods and not sometimes foods. The other it, it, recently I was on a fast, and one of the reasons that I fast is you know, I'm asking God to reveal things and show it's just part of my walk, you know. Walking. And I make it a point that I don't tell people when I'm fasting. That's between me and God. That's good. And yeah. so I was coming to the end of a fast and it was actually gonna break the next day. Well, I walk in the house and I smell peach cobbler and I was like 
how dare Kendall makes peach <laughs> cobbler? I do. And, and I turned into the kitchen, and my 14-year-old is standing by the stove. And she goes, Daddy? And I just looked up, and I was like, okay, we're breaking the fast right now. Because, I mean, here she is. She's picked right? me. I was like, this is her sacrifice of love to me. Yes. How can I look at her and go, baby, for religious reasons, Right. I'm going to break your heart, you know? And I was like, what would God want me to do in this moment? And we sat down and we had a big old bowl of cobbler. Oh, you know? look, I have chills. I know that you, <laughs> yeah. they can't see that through the podcast, but, but they're huge <laughs> <laughs> and crazy. Who is this? But isn't that beautiful yeah. that, that we can, we can really make honoring God the, the priority well, in all it, of it. It really told me a lot about what it's like when we worship the Lord. Oh, amen. Because, oh, yes. You know, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you here on the podcast, was it the best cobbler I've ever had? Yes and no. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a 14-year-old's version of cobbler. But because of who made it okay. and That's why she made it, it was it the was... best cobbler I had ever had. And, right. and, you know, when I sing my song of praise to God, is that the best song he's ever heard? Yes and no. He's got angels up in heaven could sing it's bells so and whistles better. around anybody here on earth. But because it comes out of his child's heart for him, he goes, that's the sweetest sound I've ever heard. You know, I love that idea of the yes and no and, um, and using our experience as parents to give us a glimpse into yeah. how God um, looks at us. And when we shun the, you know, the peach from the tree or the tomatoes from the vine because there's too much sugar, but then go into a laboratory and concoct, you know, yeah. co crazy concentrations of sweetness, but without any calories. I, I can't help but wonder what, what is, what, how does that make God feel when we just sort of poo poo yeah. on, you know, I, on, I, I on his gift to... and the go, <laughs> yeah, do you know what I mean? It's like my kids, when I make a home cooked meal and yeah. when they were little, like, never mind, I, oh, I just want to have a chicken nugget. I'm like, wait, what? Hey, what? I, we just made history. We said poo poo on I know. <laughs> That's awesome. Get you. That's a mom thing. That's a common. <laughs> hey, I get it. You know, I'm just, as a pastor, this is, a, this is, a, this is, we've broke a ceiling here. <laughs> you know, ladies and gentlemen, uncharted territory has now been cast here on the, on the podcast. She's a trailblazer. Yeah. She's out. She's pining. Uh, but you're exactly right. I mean, we reject what God has created mm -hmm. and substitute with what, with what man has created. And that's not just food. That's food. That's church. That's relationships. I mean, how many times did God tell us when you get home from work, check Twitter? You know, he said, no, 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 love one another. You know, sit down and talk to each other. I mean, when, when we go to the table, digital is not allowed. You know, and, and it's kind of gotten to be a thing because our four kids know that that's forbidden. And when we go out and we're with mixed company and, you know, somebody else's child who, you know, that's their rules, that's their house, that's their table. They pull out their cell phone and start watching Netflix. My kids are like, <gasps> you know, yeah, I mean, that's like, okay. Yeah, Wait, they're, they're Netflix like works outside like, of the home? You know, are, <laughs> yeah. are, are you going to be in trouble? You know, and I'm like, this isn't your house. You don't get to judge, you know, but it's, it's one of those things where they have an association that this meal time is fellowship time. This is family time. Don't stare at that little screen. Talk to each other. And that's how God created us, you know, and, and when we turn that away, just the same way we're rejecting the strawberries for the, you know, the NutraSweet, you know, when we turn away the open door of conversation that's created around the table for something else, God looks at it and goes, that's not what I made it for, mm -hmm. you know, and anytime we use something for the purpose that it was not intended, it's being abused. Uh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, we're, we're talking about food. Food really is a glimpse into, it's a microcosm of so much more, the bigger story. And you know, if you notice that God does that all the time, he gives us these little glimpses through the small things. So, you know, Jesus is the bread of life. You know, the real bread is, is still waiting for us. Um, you know, the, the meals we get Thanksgiving, you know, that's a small peek into the joy of our final banquet. So we get all these little glimpses, you know, the manna being the angel's food, which by the way, I love that manna is sweet. Right, it's yes. described as being honey-like. Yeah. So God, God, God knows that we love sweet. He sweet. created a palate yes. that likes sweet. So when we're having pumpkin pie, you know, yeah. it's probably sweeter than manna for sure. But maybe um, we it tastes good because God wanted us to enjoy yeah. and That's have right. a palate. So if we can trust that our palates will be satisfied by 
by the food that God gives us, um, then we're in a great space. Now, of course, because we abuse, as you talked about, we abuse our our palates and our taste buds and food and you know then now our palates start craving a level of sweetness and a level of fat and a level of sugar that no longer fits into that um, that god model of um you know that feedback loop as it were well, i remember when i went and and you know was following the rules of if god made it eat it mm-hmm. and if man made it don't how flavor changed mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. blueberries became sugar cubes that's you know, right. and, yes. and, and, you know, people would say, aren't those bitter? I was like, oh no, they're so sweet. And then to the reverse, when I put processed food, you know, not that I went back to it heavily, but I mean, we were at a ball game and somebody said, would you like a hot dog? And I thought, like, you know what? I haven't had a hot dog in over a year. I want a hot dog. And I bit it and it oh. was like a salt block. You know, I mean, I, I was like, oh, this is terrible. You know, and they were like, really? It looks good. I was like, no, 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 it's fine. And I said, my taste buds have not, they're in shock, you know? And it's amazing how when you kind of deprogram what you've done and reprogram to God's intention, how much better life tastes. It know. really does. And and the good news is it doesn't take all that long for your taste buds to adjust. No. And to get into Yeah, I mean, I got right back God's in the space. hot dogs real quick. No. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> adjust. Well, yeah, and, by and, my third and both one, ways. by the both fourth ways. inning, I was fine. You were fine. Yeah. That's great. And, you know, the other piece is, you know, we're not, we're not the food police. No. And, you know, listen, you know, ev- everything in moderation. Yes. So if you're craving a hot dog, great. The, the issue then becomes when we are just grabbing the hot dog because we think we, we don't comfort, have time yeah, to make we a need salad. To comfort ourselves. Yeah. 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 So uh, so having um you know so having a hot dog every now and again is sort of not the end of the not world. The I think yeah. I think God will kind of be okay with That's that. right. Absolutely. Everything in balance, but hey, it's Thanksgiving coming up, so enjoy the food, don't even yeah. count the calories. This is not it's that guilt balanced free. day. That's but right. To bring some balance to the day, Melissa, as we're signing off, one thing that you're very thankful for this Thanksgiving. Mm. Well, oh my goodness, you sprung that on me. Um, you know, I am I'm thankful that my, my in-laws, my in-laws are French, um, and they live in a uh, small town in the, in the south of France, which is where my husband is from, um, and they don't speak any English, and they're, you know, it's, they're very French, and they are going to be um, making the long trip out to wow. see us, and they, they try to come sometimes on Thanksgiving because, of course, we don't have Thanksgiving yeah. in, Paris. in, France. in France. Yeah. yeah. So uh, they come out, and in fact, in Tasting Grace, I even tell a story of my first Thanksgiving with them um, in their home, um, which was a, 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 a bit of a, <laughs> a humorous story that may have involved me plucking a turkey but um oh, so but i'm thankful clash. that yeah culture clash but i'm i'm thankful that they're making the long trip it's 23 hours wow. so they're on their way out and well, i'm so I, grateful for that that, that is, gift of of their time and energy to come and, and I, awesome. I hope they have safe travels and you yes. guys have a blessed thanksgiving and to all of you who are listening uh i want you guys to remember that thanksgiving is not just a day it's an attitude that you can have right. every, day. every day and uh, if you'd like to find a great way to celebrate the goodness of life i encourage you to get melissa's book tasting grace and uh, by doing so you're going to find a lot of things that you might not have known about food and how much god loves you remember this kendall and i love you and this thanksgiving yes. we're thankful for each and every one of you we'll talk to you guys soon thanks for joining the podcast